Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. Once again, I bring you a game from the World Chess Championship match of 2010. We have Vessel and Topalo here with the white pieces and Vishwantanan with the black pieces. I have covered the first four games. Uh, I will link to them in the, in the description down below. If some of you haven't been uh, yeah, just looking into this coverage of the World Chess Championship match of 2010. And uh, yeah. The last game that I covered, round 4, in there I wish he won with the white pieces and indeed he did won both games with the white pieces. And he takes the lead after that one and it's now up to Topalo to actually get the equalizer so that he can, with calmer nerves, continue in this match. So, uh, as usual, we have been seeing d4 as the first move, so it is also in round 5. And I will just quickly go through uh, the first move since... Uh, uh, they are pretty much equal to the moves of round 3 up until, I don't know, move 15. So we have, after d4, d5, we have the Slav uh, on the board, and after knight to f3, knight to c6, knight to c3, pretty standard setup, which he decides to capture on c4. Topalo immediately plays a4, not allowed the ideas of b5, and now bishop to f5. Knight to e5, preparing f3 and f4, like in round 3, we have e6, f3 and now c5 so not going for a very sharp bishop to b4 line but c5 and then challenging the center immediately now e4 white builds up a very nice center bishop to g6 bishop to e3 now exchanges in the center the queens are off the board after that we have bishop to d4 and after this knight from f to d7 knight captures knight captures and bishop captures on c4 now the material is equal as long as well as the whole game and uh, here we see a6, like in the previous uh, game where Topala was white and rook to c1, he continues with the same idea, so not playing king to e2. Uh, we have rook to g8, so the idea behind it, just to remind you, is to be able to develop this bishop, because bishop is lying on g7 and now h4. And once again, for the fifth time in this match, we have a situation where... Uh, uh, yeah, where uh, Anand is the one who brings out uh, the new move. So previously in round 3 he did play h6, but fearing that maybe, possibly, this h6 pawn could be uh, weak in the endgame, he decides to play h5 and, to the surprise of many, put the pawn on the light square. So, uh, yeah, it kind of stops the, the further expansion on the king side by white, but this is something that obviously Anand was preparing. And this uh, uh, gives an idea to Tupalo to maybe challenge the king side with the knight. So he plays knight to e2. After this, bishop to d6, uh, stopping the knight jumps on f4 and g3. And after that, bishop to e3, still preparing knight to f4. Knight to e5, and here uh, knight to f4 was played, but uh, the idea of uh, going for, for example, knight captures on c4, maybe here it would probably be better for white because he would improve the position of the rook. So here, where she goes for rook to c8, uh, there are no good discoveries which would take up the rook with the rook, so here we saw uh, bishop to b3. Simply going for the exchange, rook captures, bishop captures, and after this we have king to e7. King to e2, and now the other rook comes to c8, and as you can see, black uh, cannot complain. He is very easily playing this uh, position. After bishop to d7, f6 was played, and actually both of the players later in the conference mentioned that actually f6 was the move that equalizes the game. And uh, not just that, uh, it is also because this bishop can now go, come to f7, um, and uh, yeah, just go for a better game. Uh, there are no, yeah, uh, you cannot expect actually capturing here on uh, e6 uh, with the knight because of bishop to f7 and if you capture uh, with the bishop then uh, rook to c2 is an idea and also capturing uh, capturing with the knight, removing the knight as a defender and then capturing the bishop itself. So in the end uh, both of the players uh, said that it was a draw but Still, Topalo is the one with the white pieces. He doesn't want to draw in a 20-second move. He wants to go 
uh, even further. So he wants to try to see if Wishy could maybe make a mistake. Uh, but also I have failed to mention one other thing, one probably interesting thing. I think uh, at the move 13, so while there was still in that initial preparation, there was actually an outage in Sofia. Uh, in that whole city block where actually the match was played and the players were without electricity for 13 minutes uh, which ended up in yeah, just uh, the arbiter said and the organizer that they should sit on their seats the whole time and uh, not move um, and just yeah, kind of wait until the electricity gets back uh, and uh, yeah they did uh, because after 12 minutes I think uh, 12 to 15 minutes so the electricity got back and then they resumed the game anxious to win the game on both uh, players from both sides uh it, it is kind of funny to see after uh, yeah such a disturbing moment like uh, losing electricity the on the whole area where yeah you were playing the game goes dark and you are sitting there in the dark concentrating and just waiting to see what will be your next move um, yeah, but uh, let's get back to this position. Uh, here, knight to g6 was kind of forced uh, not to allow this bishop to come to f7, uh, and then move the knight e5, and then you just continue with this light square bishop onslaught. Uh, yeah, uh, Topalov decided to grab the bishop and now be the one with the bishop pair. Now, uh, he decided to play g3, and of course, I don't have to tell you that bishop to g3 is the move that loses the game for black because of rook to g1. Now, if you move the bishop, you lose the knight, so knight to f4, and after this, king to d1. Bishop to h2, uh, moving the way, moving away the bishop, but at the same time, defending the knight. Allows rook to g7, king to d6, and rook to b7. Now, white is up a pawn, and not just that, but also in a better position, having the bishop pair going for rook to b6 ideas and rook and bishop to, and bishop to c3, maybe even bishop to f4. Depends on what black plays. So, you don't want to force it, of course, as I've said many times, Wishy uh, has a strategy with the black pieces, play for a draw, with the white pieces, play for a win. So here he doesn't, of course, capture, nor does it make sense, but he wants to transfer the knight. After knight to f e5 and f4, we have knight to c6. Uh, we have bishop to c3 now, and uh, this allows this nice bishop to b4. So uh, Fischer managed to also exchange the bishop, so now white also doesn't have the bishop pair. As you can see here, uh, the bishop doesn't have anywhere to go to, so you have to exchange them. Rook to d1 and knight back to c6. Here, uh, knight to a5 could be a pest, maybe, but doesn't also bring that much. I mean, knight to c4, this maneuver kind of seems nice. So here, rook to d2 was played, and now g5. And here, a very nice trick by Topalo, king to f2, with an idea of bishop to d1 going for this weak pawn. But actually, once again, Anand surprises everybody and goes for g4. So against everything that we have been thought he fo he fixes his pawns on light squares and uh, just gives a, a potential weakness for the end game which which then um, yeah just pushes the Paulo even further to go with this game and they don't go for a draw we hope we see rook to c2 with an idea of rook to c5 attacking that pawn rook to d8 and king to e3 first so bring the king closer so rook to d3 isn't uh, possible and rook to d6 and rook to c5. Now knight to b4 and the idea is if you capture here rook to d3 check and you lose the bishop. So for the moment you cannot do that and there is actually not really a good way how to defend it. Defend against this so first rook to c7, king to d8 and rook back to c3. King back to e7 and since the Paulo doesn't want to repeat the moves he plays e5 and rook just moves to d7. Pawn captures, king captures and here yeah, black is quite easily playing this uh, position, not really afraid of anything, and uh, yeah, it's there is not much to say. Um, the players are just playing, but uh, none of them are making mistakes, and it's uh, going further and further towards the draw. King to e2, moving the king, and knight back to c6. Uh, just to tell you off the top of my head, uh, yeah, uh, the thing that a black must do, he now must keep both of the pieces because he doesn't want to exchange rooks since all of his pawns are in light squares. 
and uh, he mustn't allow uh, the actual capture of this pawn. But with the coordination of the stroke and the knight, it will be very difficult for white to actually do something like that. On the other hand, black if he manages somehow to come to this g3 pawn and capture it, then maybe he can have a pass pawn, and that, that could be his biggest threat. But, as I said, Vichy isn't interested in winning this game. He is uh, interested in a calm game, and after which he will play with the white pieces and then try for something. King to e1, knight to d4, attacking the bishop, and bishop to d1. We have a5 now. Once again, putting this is pawn on a dark square, but rook to c5 is now possible. I mean possible to play but actually not being a big threat because after this knight to a5 is played and if you play rook to a5 once again you are in a danger zone so to speak because knight to g3 with knight to f back to f5 and this g pawn will be a dangerous pass pawn so as i said this could be the only opportunity and uh, topalo doesn't want to leave it to that so he plays rook to c3 defending the pawn we have knight to d4, rook to c5, knight to f5, and rook to c3. And by Sofia rules, the, and after this threefold repetition, the arbiter decides that this game did end in a draw. So yeah, once again, Tobalo uh, draws the game with the white pieces, uh, and uh, Wishy stays in the lead with now three points against two points. So yeah. That is pretty much it for this game. I will continue with round six and uh, the rest of the games from this World Championship match. There is not much to say. Uh, but yeah, definitely I would like to thank you for watching this video and uh, I will see you next time.